Edgar said to the interviewer he was convinced that the thing out there was in a vault. Yeah, I know what he thought. Dr. Edgar's didn't think it was designed to keep things out. I know what he, he thought. He thought it was designed to keep something in. Do you even understand the difficulty trying to keep a base like Fathom at the bottom of the ocean from killing everyone in it on a daily basis? Oh my god. Everyone hold on to something. I think whatever is on the other side of that door out there, it's not friendly. I think it's trying to get out. That, my friend, is a dire combination. That's a bad sign. Get out of the door! It's spreading like some kind of technological contagion. We can either stop it here or watch the world burn. Fathom, the first season of Derelict. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Or learn more at derelictpodcast.com. Greetings, adventurers. Today we're excited to introduce you to a new story, Dark Dice, a horror podcast that blurs the line between actual play and audio drama, where the story is determined by the roll of the dice. Six adventurers embark on a journey into the ruinous domain of the Nameless God. They will never be the same again. One of the players is not what they seem after a doppelganger, a creature that can assume the form and voice of whatever it kills, infiltrates the team. As the players are picked off and replaced one at a time, can they figure out who the monster is before it's too late? Can you? Here's a quick example of what our show sounds like. The, uh, shambler with the jar of liquid inside of him. Soren Arkwright let loose an arrow that cracked the glass, passing through the spine of the creature. The shambler still managed to maintain its forward momentum, but stumbled as it eagerly tried to bite and swipe at Soren, landing near his feet. As Jeff Goldblum has now joined our cast, Dark Dice is available however you listen to podcasts. 11th Hour 2021, in association with Lightning Bolt Theater of the Mind presents The Golden Bridal, written by Leslie McMurtry and produced by Joshua J. Price and Tanya Milevich. I'm laying down. It's summer, June or July, so it's too hot for the sable fur they've draped me in. I feel heavy, but I feel no pain. All the pain is gone. I'm turned on my side, and the soles of my boots glitter with glass. Medallions of gold are sewn into my skirt. Oh, are the fish. Below is the underworld. I died far from the place on the summit where the ground was too hot. Which is as it should be. Part of me is at peace. I'm exactly where I need to be. I will need attendants to lead me through the darkness. But and this is weird. I will need purifying fire, my mirror, my knife by my side, kumish to drink, to fortify me. Dead people are all around me. My ancestors, preserved in souls, are sealed up with swords, quivers, composite bowls and axes. I'm being buried to the great mother like a rider. I hang my bow on her tree. I'm still alive! I'm not dead! Wait! Okay. Uh, again. 
Yep. Same dream. Same nightmare. Want me to come over? What time is it? 5.20. Um... Um... Could you, Danielle? I'm really sorry. I'll bring coffee. There you go. Thanks. I would have been here sooner, but the drive through was jammed. At this time of night? Uh, morning? Mm, which is which? This one is yours. It's your damn keep cup. <laughs> Sheesh. You must be more messed up than I thought. Ha ha. Half and half is in the fridge. <clears throat> After how many years? I still keep coming when you call. It comes with the job title. Unpaid psychiatrist. Best friend. Best friend, parent, child, spouse. I'm your everything rolled into one. It's why I'm prematurely aging. You look beautiful. And you smell like overripe cheese. Wow. Seriously? Yes, Foster, you do. So, what triggered this? What happened? I don't know. The ravers next door? Something you saw at work? Uh, violent nightmares? Three nights in a row about horses? Something I ate, maybe. Too much caffeine. Three days ago. Who did you do a job for? I did a lot of jobs. Uh, Shaposhnikov. I need more coffee. Professor Shaposhnikov. Mr. Shaposhnikov? You are Foster? Yeah. You are Plumber? Yeah. Is there a problem? No. I got here as soon as I could. Yes. Please, come in. Whoa. That's... Ah. That is a print of a watercolor made for Tsar Peter the Great in 1721. It is a gold object in the so-called animal style. No, I mean, I've never seen so many books in the same place, written by the same person. Yes, Phil. All these books will be under water if you don't have a look at my leaking toilet. Yes, sorry. So, the print. That was a horse, maybe? No, it was some kind of weird jaguar or something. It looked South American. South American? I thought you said he was Russian. Siberian, I think. Okay, there'll be some residual runoff, but you can dry that off with towels. Is it fixed? Yeah. That seemed easy. Now you will think I'm a fool for not being able to fix it myself. Mr. Shaposhnikov. Professor Shaposhnikov. Are any of those many books you've written about plumbing? Plumbing? No, I am archaeologist. I am expert on Pazirik Three in Alte Mountains. Oh, I see. <laughs> I should let you do your job. And I'll do mine. This house is old. It should really have its pipes overhauled. Unless you want more interruptions to your work? No, ah, uh, no. Here. I can pay in cash. He definitely seemed weird. Not weird, just overworked. There was a desk covered with papers and about a hundred coffee cups. And you could smell the vodka? No, I just think he was on a deadline. And I've come to expect people not knowing they've hired a woman plumber. I don't really take offense. That is a big house in a swanky neighborhood. Why is he living all by himself? Is he a spy? Man, why don't you use a cell phone like everybody else? 
<sighs> Sorry, Danielle. No worries. I haven't been sleeping well either. You haven't? Tell me about your nightmares. Who said anything about nightmares? I'm going to go home and get changed. Thanks for breakfast. Oh, sorry, I didn't think. I hope you'll use this time to get on top of your invoices. Yes? Okay. Take care of yourself. See you later. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks so much. What does everybody eat? Ugh, I do smell like goat cheese. Foster wreath minus plumbing. Professor Shaposhnikov. Yes, it is early. No, you didn't wake me. It is an emergency. Okay, I guess I can. I'll be in your area mid-morning. Can it wait till then? Okay. Are you sure you didn't... I did tell you the pipes were... Okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. The door is open. Mrs. Foster, please. Different bathroom? Yes. Third floor. Follow me. I am sorry for the mess. The police were here. Not to deal with the leak. No, I... guessed. I have been robbed last night. I'm sorry to hear that. My work has been very disrupted. Can they find what was stolen? Oh, I think not. Laptop, TV, I can replace. My wife's jewelry. Your wife? My late wife. It is Baltigam. She was from the shores of the Black Sea. The land of the Royal Scythians. Uh, yes, here. Here is Lee. Okay, I'll need to turn off the stopcock. Can I ask you to... Hold this. I know where is stop. I will do it. dream, I am in a burial chamber. I can see what I think are two bodies. I want to run away, but I'm rooted to the spot. I get closer. Or they get closer, I can't tell. One looks like a woman. Her face is white and painted with red. The other is a man. His face is red, painted with white. They look weird and lumpen, misshapen. And I know that they're mummies. And they want to make me like them.
Shapashnikov. What is? The white Russians drink vodka. That's why they lost the revolution. Tea is good for a shock. Have you seen The Godfather? Do you get that in Russia? In The Godfather, it was horse's head in bed. This, this is horse's skull in toilet pipe. You don't seem quite as weirded out as you should be. So maybe it's a normal thing in Russia? Mrs. Foster, Ms. Foster, uh, what's his title? Just call me Rithmanis. I don't care as much about titles as you do, Professor. Is Latvian? Rithmanis? I don't know. I led many digs in Latvia early in my career, before I fell under the spell of Tsar Peter's collection. Are you going to report this to the police, or should I? Maybe you can recommend me another plumber. Another plumber? I think... You distrust me. I don't think you beheaded a horse and stuffed it down your own toilet. Thank you for that vote of confidence. It is weird, though, because I have been dreaming. Yes. What is that? Oh, that. The so-called Oglakti mummies. The women were made into mummies, and the men were cremated and put into dummies, like scarecrows. Her face... That is a clay mask. They think it represents tattoos. These people had tattoos on their bodies. Have you seen them before? I haven't. Danielle, I'm pulling up to your apartment. I don't know why you're not answering your phone, but I'm going to keep talking until I get cut off. When he showed me the book, I made excuses and sort of emotionally blackmailed him into giving it to me. If you review your ring footage later, you can see that I did knock, but I assume you're having a shower or something, so I'm just going to make myself at home until you get out. Ow! I thought you said the maids were coming. You normally clean up before they get here. Laptop, TV, I can replace. My wife's jewelry. This voice mailbox is full. Please hang up and try or call again later. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. As you may have heard, I have had an extremely trying day. Excuse me, Professor. I just wanted to say that that was an amazing lecture. Truly, I was fascinated. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. He's right. It was really great. Good night, Professor. Thank you. Good night. Good evening. I'd like to book a flight to La Quetia in a bit. I want to thank Dr. Anton Raimundovich Persikat of the Carroll Institute for inviting me to give this talk on the Scythian burial at Pesirik III in the Altai Mountains in Siberia. As you probably know, I was one of the principal investigators on the initial dig nearly 14 years ago. You may be familiar with the so-called Siberian Ice Maiden, or Altai Princess, an individual in her 30s, mummified and entombed in a large bark coffin in burial chamber 1 in al alaka III. The individual in the main burial chamber at Pesirik III was most likely a similar case. But we cannot be sure due to the tomb robbing in antiquity and desecration of the body, as in Pesirik 1, Burial Mound 5. Uh, that is from Frankfurt to Moscow, and then on to Yekaterinburg, 
there is no way to bypass Moscow. Burials of warriors are relatively common. Surrounded elaborate clothing of sable fur, squirrel fur, stitched with golden medallions, even imported Chinese or Indian natural silk. Necklaces of cornelian, glass, amber, and colored stone. In addition to akinakis, which was the Greek word for short sword, and sagaris, the ancient Iranian name for the pointed battle axe. Not to neglect the so-called Scythian bow, which was held in a combination quiver called a goriko. Yes, I would like to rent a car in Yekaterinburg, but I would like to book this flight for tonight or tomorrow morning. I am aware that this is a red-eye flight. I have only one checked bag. Around 600 BCE, a Scythian royal dynasty emerged and ruled Eurasia for about a century. Scythians fought against the Persians and the Greeks at different points between the 7th century BCE and the dissolution of the empire in 300 BCE. The Pazyrik III burial is from around 400 BCE. As at Berel the coffin and burial chamber had been looted, but horse burials were found intact. The number of horse burials may be symbolic. 30 were found at Pazyrik III. 30 for one month, you understand? The horses were killed by a plow of the pointed battle axe to the forehead. Yeah. Ah! Oh, it's you, Foster the Plumber. What were you doing here? Were, were you at the lecture? I came to return your book. Oh, keep it. Can I talk to you? I'm in a rush. I want to tell you about my dreams. About the horses. That's how it always ends. Do you want to explain this to me? What do you need explaining? You read the book. The woman, at Pajidik 3. Her body was torn to pieces. Her clothing stolen. Her head was found in the burial chamber along with some toe bones. Grave robbing for gold, I understand. Why desecrate the body? I'm going to be late for my flight, please. There's one more thing. My best friend, Danielle... I don't know how to explain this. I think she broke into your house. In a way, it feels good to finally tell someone. All the 30 horses at Pazirik 3 were buried in magnificent horse gear, bridles, headdresses, saddles, beautifully preserved in the permafrost. Everything is in the Republican National Museum, except this. It's part of a golden bridle. The shape is the same... As the animal-style pieces in the Hermitage collection, yeah. But I've decided. I'm taking it back to Gorna Altesp tonight. Why? That's where it belongs. I'm not. Is someone in the back of the car? Oh my god. Danielle? Well, go on, Foster. Scream. I I don't believe. What? Is he? I broke into cars a lot as a kid. You don't ever exactly forget how. I think it was shock. What? You think, when something like this happens to you, that you'll fight back, but the shock... Get back here! Give me the bridle! Help! Shut up! I'm bigger and faster than you. some questions and I want you to understand before I complete the work I started 2,000 years ago I know you don't have a lot of imagination Foster but I think it's starting to dawn on you I'm not Danielle your best friend 
And before you ask me whether or not I'm possessed, I'm not that either. I knew as soon as we met in first grade that you were Geda, one of the old day. Buried in ceremony with thirty horses, your attendants slaughtered beside you. Prepared for your journey to the afterlife. The Scythians never give up their quarry. They fight until annihilation. I annihilated your body once, and I'll do it again. <laughs> it's true. I do dream about the Eklahti mummies. I've spent lifetimes robbing tombs, so I can't help remember my victims sometimes. But I don't have nightmares. That would imply I feel remorse. And once I have the bridle, all trace of you will be gone. <laughs> Spirits of the Altai, take this defiler into the underworld! of a 4th century golden bridal ornament from a Scythian burial. Coincidentally, though, you can now get plumbing advice in English or Russian from a Reef Manis Plumbing, according to the website, based in the Ekaterinburg a area. local urban legend says if you go by the University Park at midnight, you can hear the sound of horses' hooves. <laughs> you gonna try it? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna try it. That's it for this episode of the Witching Hour podcast, Local Myths and Legends. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe. Remember, you're never alone at the Witching Hour. Thank you for listening to The Golden Bridal. The Golden Bridal was written by Leslie McMurtry for the 11th Hour Challenge. Dialogue was edited by Monique Boudreau and Joshua Price. Produced and mixed by Joshua Price and directed by Tanya Mulevich. Music composed by Grace Mary Borega. Audio pronunciations for the cast recorded by Melissa Beatty. Cast. Pandora Beatrix as Foster and Keda, Tanya Milevich as Danielle Buckley and voicemail, Lothar Tuppen as Professor Konstantin Shaposhnikov, Patricia Jeffson as receptionist, Joshua J. Price as Passerby 1 and Passerby 2, Leslie McMurtry as Podcast Host 1, Rod Henderson as Podcast Host 2, Sound effects were gathered from the Free Sound Project, self-produced, and pulled from the Lightning Bolt Theater of the Mind Sound Library. This production falls under a Creative Commons United States license. Thank you for listening. Happy World Audio Drama Day, and Happy Halloween! Do you dig science fiction? Then get ready for the hardest hitting sci-fi you've ever heard. The Galactic Football League series by number one New York Times bestselling author Scott Sigler is now a free, unabridged podcast. 
It's Star Wars meets Peaky Blinders meets Ted Lasso. The GFL is a star-spanning, high-action, high-stakes, coming-of-age story set against the backdrop of a professional football league 700 years in the future. Follow the journey of Quentin Barnes, a gifted athlete who must travel from his backwater system to the galaxy's sprawling empires in his quest to be the best there's ever been. But he needs to watch his back as organized crime runs every franchise, fixing games and assassinating rival players. That's the Galactic Football League series. Search for Scott Sigler, S-I-G-L-E-R, wherever you get your podcasts. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Buntwine erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I study the secrets of the divine plagues and uncover the blasphemous truth that ours is not a loving God and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Bantwine, wherever podcasts are available.